Lou's a very kind person. He sometimes can be very critical. Lou has uh, a very interesting sense of humor. The students especially really appreciate it because his jokes are very sort of scientifically driven. Lou is in a great company of some very distinguished people here at UCSD. And so uh, Walter Kohn, who together with Lou invented the density functional theory, and that's what I want to say about Lou, that Lou looks like a giant, but he was giant among giants. I was born in Hong Kong and then graduated in a Chinese high school. Then uh, I went to uh, England. My education was in Portsmouth Tech, Imperial College London, and uh, Cambridge. At Imperial College, I took math. But that's where, in the third year, I had a professor who later on got the Nobel Prize for what he did. So I became into like uh, physics, especially quantum physics. Professor Sham is probably one of the most distinguished professors in this university. He invented something called the density functional theory, which is a method to calculate properties of materials, of molecules, of drugs, of all kinds of things. It's a way to calculate them and use a computer to calculate them. It's the, the standard method that all over the world, physicists, chemists, biologists use it. And so this is a very important discovery, which actually gave the Nobel Prize to Walter Kohn, who was also a professor here at UCSD. It's very important to remember that in 1965, when Kohn and Shame came up with this famous equation, the computing power was extremely limited. However, I believe that Lou could see that in the future, the computing will develop to the point where this kind of computations become commonplace. So it's remarkable how discoveries that were made almost 60 years ago have very important impact on material discovery that we do today in the labs. The last time I looked at how many people were using those basic equations in computational packages, which was only a few hours ago, it was up of the order of 100,000 people. That's an astounding number of people uh, that have referred to that work. And that was way beyond anything that anybody could have predicted, even Lou. There is a lot of biochemistry applications that use that equation in order to predict the kind of molecules that can be used in the future to enable the health and environment and safety for humans without actually going through very expensive trials. And this is the technique. And it is invented here at UCSD in Meyer Hall. And the Meyer Hall, in fact, was designated as a historical physics site because of an invention of the density functional theory. And so it's, if you go to Meyer Hall, you'll see a plaque there, the American Physical Society put on, on the building. Lou's probably most significant administrative uh, contributions were when he was dean. He recognized what we did in condensed matter physics could be spread to many other disciplines in the sciences and engineering, and he worked actively in trying to build those bridges. And the best discoveries nowadays come from collaborations between physicists and chemists and engineers and mathematicians. And so he found an institute that enabled those kind of interactions, that enabled new types of discoveries to be made. That was the vehicle to cause that interdisciplinary work. I like interacting with the students. I think the best time uh, I had uh, was that the first year graduate students had to take physics. He was very famous for teaching uh, courses such as quantum mechanics, which is basically the foundation of the equation that he's very well uh, known for. Some of my colleagues here, both in physics department and engineering, have been students who've taken courses with Lou and later went on to become professors. And there is no better way to honor him, I think, is by having some of his former students go to even greater uh, achievements and uh, essentially take the lead from, from Lou. So as the chair of the thesis department, I look up to Lou as the former chair and as a role model. He became the chair in the 1990s. He oversaw an expansion of our faculty that was quite important at the time. We had a very distinguished faculty and that started decreasing. And then Lou took upon himself to rebuild it. It was his, his role to build a strong, vibrant physics department, which is, you know, now it's one of the top departments in the country and I'm very proud of being part of it, of course. I was one of the nominators for Lou for the Ravel Medal because it just seemed natural. 
and how does it feel to receive the Rebel Medal? Well, I feel honored, yeah. Yeah, surprised. <laughs>